In this video, we're going to look at using Microsoft Excel for testing hypothesis with a p-value. Here's our information up here. And the first thing we always need to check is if this thing is true. It says it's true, but we'll put that information into the Microsoft Excel to show it's true as well. So here's our document. The blues are the boxes we'll be entering values in, and the red boxes are the calculation boxes. So let's get our x, n, and p naught. Our x is 90, 200, and then our p naught is this value right here, the 0.4. So 90, 200, and 0.4. Then we need the point estimate, or the p hat, which is just the x value divided by the n value. So I'm going to make that a calculation, so that updates all the time. Then here's our equation that we need to satisfy is greater than or equal to 10. The reason we do is because then we're able to use a uh, normal distribution with our values here for the rest of it to get our p-value. If not, then we have to use a binomial distribution for a smaller than that. So we set this equal. We have n times p-naught. So n, we have to put a times symbol here. p-naught, another times symbol. Open parentheses, 1 minus p-naught. And then end my parentheses, so 48. And that's greater than or equal to 10, so we can continue this path here. And then we need the standard deviation, which would be this equation here. It's a basic normal standard deviation of the, the values that we have, and p-naught is um, this value, and then over n, obviously, right? You're going to divide by the number. So we need the square root of p-naught times parenthesis 1 minus p naught. that's all the numerator, and since it's multiplication, I can just make it one item like that, divided by the n value, and then close the parenthesis for the square root, hit enter. So there's our standard deviation. Now we're going to compute the test uh, statistic z naught, and then what that is going to be is going to be p hat minus p naught divided by that standard deviation. So that's kind of why I created that, so we could do this piece by piece. So we're going to take this in parentheses equals the p hat point estimate minus the p naught divided by standard deviation. And there's our z statistic, or z naught, 1.443376. Now what we're interested in here is what kind of test we're doing. Well this test here was a greater than test. It, we're trying to decide whether the hypothesis is greater than this value. So since we're doing a greater than test, that's a right-hand tail test right here. That means we're trying to find this area out here. If you have a less than tail, a less than, it's a left-hand tail, so you want this area here corresponding to that z value. And then if you have a two-tailed test, you want the both areas. Okay, so basically we have that 1.443376. We want to find the area that's to the right of that z value. All right, so that's our greater than one right here. So I'm going to do the middle t test, the greater than first, because it was a greater than value. Now we have a formula in um, Excel that will give us back that area. It's called norm.s.dist, and then your z value, comma true. But remember, that returns the, the portion that's always to the left of the z value. So if we do that, we're, we're going to get the value from here to the left. And I don't want that. I want here to the right. So that's going to be 1 minus the value to the left. So that's why when you're going to the right of a value, you need, you need equals 1 minus norm.s.dist. And then the z value goes in there. And the z value is going to be always placed here comma, and then true, and then hit enter. So this gives us the value to the right of our z statistic, and that will be our p-value, point, point zero seven four four five seven. And if we look at our value here, the p-value is 0 0.075. And now, because we are testing at a 0 0.01, uh, significant level here, and the p-value is not less than the significance value, we do not reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater. If it was less than this value, so like 0 
five or something, then we would reject the null hypothesis. But since it's greater than that value, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And that's what this statement says here for. If your p-value is less, reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater, you do not reject the null hypothesis. So in our case, we would not reject the null hypothesis. Now I'm going to finish filling out this, uh, these two values in case we want to do a different value for z. So for example, if our z value was a less than a left tailed test, all I have to do is just put equals and then norm.s.dist and then put our z value in, comma, and true. Because that's going to find the area to the left. So of course this probably will be a negative z value then, right? And then it will will know to use this one because it's a less than. So we, we disregard that, right? Because that's to the left. That's showing 92% to the left of here, whereas the 7%, you know, 7.5 is that way. Okay? Our equal, we need to get both areas. We gotta be careful with this z value though. We don't know if that z value is gonna be positive or negative. It makes it a little challenging to add up both areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that the z value is always positive. And so we're going to find the area to the right of this one here. We're going to force the z value to be positive by putting absolute values on it. And then we're going to find the area to the right and we're just going to double it. Because the area to the left of the negative z value is the same to the right of the positive z value. So that's what this says here. Double, and then we go to the right, and then we have an ab abs z. So abs of this value. So this is what it looks like to find the equal equal two times one minus norm dot s dot dist and then abs for absolute value in a parenthesis because we want the absolute value of that number and that number will always be positive and since that number will always be positive then we want to find the right of it and then true that ends that one and then that ends the total one there so there's the formula the one minus this value finds the right absolute value makes it to positive and we'll make it over here and then two times it gives both tails enter so this obviously isn't working for us here and neither would this one because this was the answer we looked for we're looking for for our problem all right let's move on let's quickly use this problem and use our excel document new hypothesis it's a two-tailed test because it's either equal we're testing and this is the not equal so we have 500, 420, and 0 0.05 significance level. So let's put that values in there. 420, 500, and 0 0.85. All right, everything updated completely for us. We're looking for a two test value. And that's the finding in this one and this one. And our two tail test is 0 0.5311. If we look at it here, 0.5312. 0.5311, there's a little bit of uh, error that's associated with it. We can go up and down there, so we're fine. Now, we do not reject the null hypothesis because the value is greater than alpha. So remember, if this value is less than this value, then we reject the null hypothesis. But again, here, it is greater than this value, so we say we do not reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than alpha. Let's look at one last one here. It says previously 5% of mothers smoked more than 21 cigarettes during their pregnancy. An obstetrician believes that percentage of mothers who smoke 21 cigarettes or more is less than 5% today. She randomly selects 155 pregnant mothers and finds that four out of the 20, four out of them have smoked 21 or more cigarettes during their pregnancy. Test the researcher's statement at a 0 0.05 level of significance. So here's the test. The initial test is that it was 0 0.05, and our test is that it's going to be less than 0 0.05, less than 5% today. Okay, so we use technology to find this information. Let's put our values in there. We have 155 for n, and we have 4 for our x value, so 4 here and 155. Then our p naught is 0 0.05, 5%. That's what our p naught was right here, is less than 5%. Okay, So we look over here at our equation here, or inequality here, and it says 7.36. It's not greater than or equal to 10. 
We cannot use the normal distribution information here. We need to go and make a binomial distribution. So that's where we have the number of successes, the probability of that success, and the cumulative. So if we start out one, two, three, four, and then fill that down for the number of successes. I'm right clicking, and then I'm going to do fill series. And then for the probability of the success, it's binome.dist. And we put the number of successes in there, which is that box there. The number of trials, which is the n. Whoops, got to go back here. For some reason I didn't take that box. So the number of successes, which is this box right there, comma, the number of trials, which is the n value, and the probability of success, 0 0.05, and then cumulative, we want false on this one. So that's our information. We hit enter, and then we need to put some dollar signs on here so that it keeps pointing. We want it to point to the trials, so a dollar sign, and we want it pointing to the probability, but we want this blue box to move down as we pull it down. So now I grab the corner after putting those in and just pull that down a ways. Go back up. The cumulative, same thing, binome.dist, parenthesis, the number of successes again, that one. The trials, and we have the probability, and then this time we want true for our last thing for cumulative. And then we hit enter. Again, put the dollar sign on the C3 and the dollar sign on the C4. Enter and grab and pull that down. All right, then let's go, because this is going to be our p-value. We're going to use this information to get our p-value. This is a less than problem. Okay, so less than 5%. And it said finds that four of them smoked 21 or more or more cigarettes during the pregnancy. So we want the area less than that, then less than four, which is the cumulative um, probability. So we want 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So when we go back and look at our thing here, if we're looking at less than or equal to, this would be the cumulative, this would be our p-value then, 0 0.10872, and then that's what we have here for the p-value, 0.1. 087. Now that p-value is greater than the level of significance. Therefore, when answering this question, is there su sufficient evidence to support the obstetrician statement? We say no because the p-value is greater than alpha. There is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the percentage of mothers who smoke 21 or more cigarettes during pregnancy is less than 5% meaning we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's how you use Microsoft Excel for hypothesis testing.